So last time we were talking about the future of man. <coughs> All the psychologists, as far as they can understand, are, you know, are they really concerned with the future of man? Or are they concerned with the human being conforming to the present society or going beyond that? Well, I think that most psychologists <coughs> evidently want the human being to conform to this society. But I think some psychologists, uh, some of whom will be listening to us, uh, are thinking of going beyond that to transform uh, the consciousness of mankind. Can the consciousness of mankind be changed through time? Yes, that, that's uh, one of the questions we should discuss this evening. Yes, we have discussed it actually last time. And uh, I think that what came out was that uh, the, the consciousness of mankind, that, in, that with regard to consciousness, time is not relevant, that it is a kind of illusion. That we discussed yes. the illusion of becoming. Yes. We are saying, aren't we? Let's be clear that. <coughs> The evolution of consciousness is a fallacy. As through time, right? Yes. Through time. Through now, time. Though through e through physical evolution is not. Yes. Now, there is no, can we put it this much more simply, there is no psychological evolution or the evolution of the psyche. Yes, and since the... Uh, the future of mankind depends on the psyche. It seems then that we cannot. Man, the future of mankind is not going to be determined through actions in time, right? Time. That's right. And then that left us the question: What will we do, right? That's now. Let's proceed from there. Yeah. Shouldn't we first distinguish between the brain and the mind? Yes, well, that distinction has been made, and it is not clear. Now, of course, there are several views. One view is to say that mind is just a function of the brain, and that is the materialist view. There's another view which says mind and brain are two different things. Yes, I, would pr I think they are two different things. Uh, but they must be... A contact between the two. Uh, yes, a relation. A relation. The two. As we don't necessarily imply any separation of the two, no, first let's see the brain. Yeah. Uh, I'm really not a, an expert on the structure of the brain and all that kind of thing, but I, one can see within, one, one can observe one's own activity of the brain that it is really like a computer that's been programmed and remembers. Well, it's certainly a great a large part of the activity is that way, but one is not certain that all of it is that way. No. And it is conditioned. Yeah. Conditioned by past generations, by the society, by the newspapers, by the magazines, <coughs> by all the activities and pressure from the outside. It yeah. is conditioned. Yes. Now, what do you mean by this conditioning? You see, what does it... It is programmed. It is... It is made to conform to a certain pattern, lives entirely on the past, modifying itself in the future, with the, with the present and going on. Yes, now we've agreed that some of this conditioning is useful and necessary. Of course, we've discussed that last Yes, time. and uh, now, but the, the conditioning which uh, determines the self, you know, which determines... When, the you know, psyche. The psyche, or you call it the psyche. Let's call it for the moment the, the psyche. psyche. With the it, self. The self, the psyche. That conditioning is what you're talking about. That uh, is, may not only be unnecessary, but harmful. Right? Yes, that's what we were discussing too. Yes. That the, uh, the emphasis on the psyche, as we are doing now, and giving importance to the self, is creating great damage in the world. 
because it is separated and it is therefore it is, it is constantly in conflict yeah. not only within itself and with the society, with the family, and so on, so on. Yes, and it's also in conflict with nature. With the nature, with the whole yeah. universe, you can call it. I think we discussed last time that the conflict arose because the, the, uh, because the, 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 yeah, the division arising because thought is limited. Thought is limited. Ba- being right. based on this conditioning, on this me- knowledge and memory, it is memory limited. Would, yes. yes, and experience is limited, therefore knowledge is limited, memory and thought. Thought is limited, and the very structure and the nature of the psyche is the movement of thought. Yes. In now, time. Yes. Now I'd like to ask a question. When you discuss the movement of thought, it doesn't seem clear to me what is moving. You see, I discussed the movement of my hand. That is a real movement. It's clear what is meant. But now when I discuss the movement of thought, it seems to me we're discussing something which is a kind of illusion, because you have said becoming is the movement of thought. Becoming is entirely caught. And that, therefore, if you say thought... That, that, that's what I mean, the movement in becoming. But that movement you're saying is in some way illusory, aren't you? Uh, yes, of course. Of course. But it, it's rather like the movement on the screen, and, uh, which is projected from the... Uh, from the screen, from camera. the camera. Yes. And we say that there's no object moving across the screen, but the only real movement is the turning of the projector. Now... Yes. Can we say that there's a real movement in the brain which is projecting all this, which is the conditioning? So, so that's what I want to find out. Let's yeah. discuss that a bit. Yeah. We both agree or see that the brain is conditioned. And we, and we mean by that that really it's been impressed physically. Physically as well and as chemically. genetically as well as psychologically. Well, what is the difference of physically and psychologically? Psychologically... It is centered in the self, right? Yes. And the, and the constant assertion of the self is the movement, is the conditioning. Yes, but the, the, insofar as we experience it, that's, that's an illusion, right? Uh, if, that's if we said that's an yeah, illusion. Yes, but there is some real movement happening inside. Say the brain, for example, is, is doing something. It's been conditioned physically and chemically. Chemically, and, yes. And something is happening physically and chemically when we are thinking of the self, right? Are you saying, are you asking rather, the brain... And the self are two different things? No, I'm saying the self is a, the result of conditioning the brain. Yes. And the, func- the self is conditioning the brain. Yeah, but does the self exist? You see, uh, uh, see no, how, uh, no. Uh, how, but the conditioning of the brain, as I see it, is involving with an illusion which we call the self. That's right, that's right. Which can, may- that, can that conditioning be dissipated? Yes. That's your whole question. Yes, and it really has to be dissipated in some physical and chemical and uh, neurophysiological yes. sense. Right? Yes. And now the first reaction of any scientific person would be it looks unlikely that we could dissipate it by the sort of thing we are doing. You see, some scientists might feel, well, maybe we will discover drugs or new genetic uh, changes or deep knowledge of the structure of the brain, and that way we could perhaps hope to do something. I, I think that idea might be current among some people. Will will that change the human behavior? Well, why not? You see, I think some people believe it might. That uh, uh, That is, wait a minute, that's a whole point. It might. Yeah. Which means in the future. Yes. Hmm? It would take time to discover all this. Discover all this. In the meantime, man is going to destroy himself. Well, they might hope that he'll manage to do it in time. You see... uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Because they could also criticize what we're doing, saying uh, the same point, saying what, what good can it do? You see, it doesn't seem to affect anybody, and, uh, and certainly not in time to uh, make a big difference. You see, uh, 
I say that's a question that would arise. Suppose for the sake of argument that we're... You, we too have very clear about it. Yeah. What does, that, in what way does it affect human, humanity? Mankind, and will it affect mankind in time to really save... Certainly them? not. Obviously then, not. Well, then what are, why should we be doing it? Because we are, this is the right thing to do. Independently. Independently. <laughs> it has nothing to do with reward and punishment. Or with uh, goals. Yes. As, as you do the right thing, even though we don't know what the outcome will be, right? That's right. Now, you're saying that there is no other way, right? There is, we are saying that there is no other way. That's right. Uh, yeah, so we should make that clear. Now, see, for example, some psychologists would feel that uh, by, start, by inquiring into this sort of thing, we could bring about a, an evolutionary transformation of consciousness, right? Hmm? So, now, we come back to that point, that through time... Yes. We hope to change consciousness. Yes. I qu we question that. We have questioned that, and we're saying that time uh, and will inevitably involve, uh, we're all caught in becoming an illusion, and right. we will not know what That's we're doing. Right. Now, could we say the same thing would hold even for those scientists who are trying to do it physically and chemically or, or some structurally, that they themselves are still caught in this, and through time they're... Yeah. They're caught in trying to become better. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and we'll not know what they're doing, both, really. Both the experimentalists <laughs> and the psychologists and ourselves, they're all trying to become something. Yes, though they may, may not seem obvious at first. It may seem that they're really just uh, disinterested uh, or, or unbiased observers, you know, or working on the problem. But underneath, there is, you feel there's a desire to, to become, become better on the part of the person who of is course, doing it. But he, he is not free of that. That's that just it. They and, are not free of that. And that desire will give rise to de self-deception and illusion and so on. So what, where do we come, where, do, where are we now? That any form of becoming is an illusion. And the becoming implies time. Time uh, the, for the psyche to change, we are saying time is not necessary. Yes, now the, the, that ties up with the other question of the mind and the brain. Now, uh, see, the brain clearly is to be understood as a activity in time, as a physical, neuro, a chemical, neuro, uh, a complex process. I think the mind is separate from the brain. Well, what does it mean, separate? That is, it's separate in context. Separate in the sense, uh, brain is conditioned <clears throat> and the mind is not. Well, let's say the mind has a certain independence of the brain, is what you're saying, that even if the brain is conditioned... The other is not. ...need not be conditioned. Conditioned. Uh, now, uh, how do, on what basis do you say that? Uh, I w no, let's begin not on what basis do I or say Or what that. makes you say it, right? I, as long as my one's brain or the brain is conditioned, it's not free. Yes. And the br mind is free. Yes, that's what you're saying. Now, see, the brain uh, not being free means it is not free to inquire in an unbiased way. And I'm going to, let's go inquire, what is freedom? Yeah. Freedom to inquire, as you point out, freedom to investigate, and it's only in freedom there is deep insight. Yes, that's clear, because if you're not free to inquire in any, you know, if you are biased, then you're limited. Limited. In an arbitrary way, no. So, as long as the brain is conditioned, its relationship to the brain, to the mind, is limited. Yes, now we have the relationship of the brain to the mind, here, yes. now, or is it, and yes. also the other way around, right? Yes. But the, be, the mind, being free, has a relationship to the brain. Yes. Now, we say the mind is free in some sense, not, not subject to the conditioning of the brain. Yes. Now, one could ask a question, what is the nature of the mind? For example, I could ask, is the mind located inside of the body, or is it in the brain? No, it's, it's nothing to do with the body or the brain. Is, has it to do with space or space time? Space and space, just me, space... Wait a minute. It's to do with space and silence. 
These are the two factors. But not the, time. Huh? Not time. Time is a, belongs mm. to the brain. All right, now what you say, space and silence. Now, what kind of space? It is not the space in which we see light no, moving. No, space. Let's look around the other way. Thought can invent space. Well, in addition, we have the space that we see, yeah. and thought can invent different invent, kinds yeah. of space. And space from here to there. Yes, the space through which we move physically. Move, yeah. Space also between two noises. Between two sounds. Uh. There's two sounds. Well, that's, that's the der interval, they call it, the interval of, uh, that would be called the interval between two sounds. Yes, the interval between two noises. Or two noises. Right? Two thoughts. Or two thoughts. Two right? notes. Yes. Two, uh, space between two people. Yes, uh, space between the walls. Well, and so on. But that kind of space is not the space of the, of the mind. You say it is not limited that's, that is I not an interval. I didn't want to use the word limited. But I mean, it's implied. Yes. It's not in the nature of being bounded by uh, something. No, it is not bounded by the psyche. By the psyche. But is it bounded by anything? No. no. Now, the psyche, you say, bo is bounded because we've said it is limited, you know, and so yes. on right now. So, can the brain, that's what I want to find out, yes. discuss rather, talk over, can the brain with all its cells conditioned, can those cells radically change? Yeah, well, we, we've often discussed, you say, it's not certain that all the cells are conditioned. For example, some people think that only some, a small part of the cells are being used, and the others are rather just not being uh, in active Use dormant. Yeah. yeah. Or just touched occasionally. Just touched occasionally. But the, those cells that are conditioned, whatever they may be, evidently dominate consciousness now, right? Can that be those cells be changed? Yes. We are saying that they can, through insight. Yes. Now, inside being out of time, it's not the result of remembrance. It's not a intuition or desire or hope. It's nothing to do with any any time, and thought. Yes, now, but you say insight, is it of the mind? Is it of the nature of mind, right? Activity of mind. Yes. Right. Now, therefore, you're saying mind can act in the matter of the brain. Yes, uh, we said that earlier. Yes, but we have to, uh, but you see, this is a difficult point, you see, uh, the, uh, how mind is able to act in matter. It is able to act on the brain. Say, for instance, take any crisis or any problem. Hmm? Problem is, at uh, the root meaning of it, as you know, is something thrown at you. And we meet it with all the remembrance of the past, with a bias and so on. And therefore, the problem multiplies itself. Mm -hmm. You may solve one problem, in the very solution of one problem, of that particular problem, other problems arise, as they are doing in politics and so on, so on. Right? Now, to approach the problem, or to have perception of the problem, without any rem past memories and thoughts interfering or projecting in perception of the problem. Yes, uh, now that, that implies that perception also is of the mind, that it is uh, That's right. not... Uh, are you more or less saying that the brain is a kind of instrument of the mind? Is that what is being... Instrument of the mind when the brain is not self-centered. Yes, well, see, if we think of all this conditioning, the conditioning may be thought of as excite the brain exciting itself and keeping itself going Good. just from right. the program. This occupies all of its uh, capacity. All our days. Yes, right. well, all the whole capacity yes. of the brain. And 
uh, it's rather like a radio receiver which can generate its own noise. It would not pick up a signal. Now, would this analogy be at all? Uh, not uh, it's quite. not very good, but. Not really. Uh, you see, sir, would you, would you go into this a little bit? Experience is always limited. I may blow up that experience into a kind of fantastic affair and then set up a shop <laughs> to sell my experience. But that experience is limited. And so knowledge is always limited. Mm. And this knowledge is operating in the brain. This knowledge is mm. the brain. And thought is also part of the brain, and that thought is limited. So the brain is operating in a very, very small area. Yes, well, what prevents it from operating in a broader area? Why should, what is preventing it from operating in, a, in an unlimited area? Thought. Thought. No, but thought in the brain, it seems to me, is running on its own, from its own program, right? Yes, on its, like a computer that's running yeah. on its own program. Yes, now, essentially that what you're asking is that the brain that should really be responding to the mind. To that it can only respond if it is free from, from the limited, from the thought which is limited. Yes, so the program does not dominate it. You see, we are going to still need that program. Of course, of course, we need for... Many things, things, yes, it may, but... Uh, uh, the intelligence, but, okay. right, I mean, but which uh, is intelligence from the mind then? Yes, yes. intelligence is the mind. Yes, the mind. Because uh, now that comes into, we must go into something else. Because uh, compassion is related to intelligence. There is no intelligence without compassion. And compassion can only be when it is when there is love, which is completely free from all uh, remembrances, personal uh, jealousies, and all that kind of thing. Now, is all that compassion, love, also of the mind? Of the mind. Uh, is Not, that... And you cannot be compassionate if you are attached to any particular experience or any particular idea. Mm. Yes, well, that's again the program that uh, is that's, just holding that's, it. Yes. But, uh, uh, say for instance, there are those people who, are, who go to various poverty countries and work, 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 and they call that compassion. But they are attached or tied to a particular form of religious belief. And therefore, that, that's merely pity, sympathy, but it's not compassion. Yes, well, I understand that uh, we, we have here two, independ two, uh, uh, two things which can be somewhat independent. There's the brain and the mind, though they make contact. Now then, uh, uh, and intelligence and compassion, we say, come from beyond the brain. Now then, one, I would like to go into the question of how they are making contact, you see. That is... Ah. Uh, I, contact can only exist between the mind and the brain when the brain is quiet. Yes, and that's the condition for making it. That's yes. the requirement for making it. Now then, yes. uh, the brain has got to be quiet. Now, uh, quiet is not a trained quietness. Mm -hmm. Not a self-conscious meditative uh, desire for silence. It's a natural outcome of understanding one's own conditioning. Yes, and one can see that if the uh, brain is quiet, then it can, uh, you could almost say it can listen to something deeper, right? Deeper, that's right. So. Then if it's quiet, it's related to the brain. Yes. Then to the mind. So. Then the mind can function through the brain. Uh, now, I think that it would help if we could see... Uh, with regard to the brain, whether it has any uh, 
activity or, which is beyond thought. You see, for example, one could ask, is awareness part of the uh, a function of the brain? As long as awareness, in which there is no choice, I'm aware. And in that awareness, I choose. Yes, well, I think that may cause difficulty. You see, why, why, what is wrong with choice? Choice means confusion. It's not obvious just from the word, you see that. Of course, to choose between two things. Yeah, now I could choose whether I, you know, I buy yes, one thing or I another. I can choose between this table and that table. Or choose the colors when I buy yes, the table. Yes, this better table. That's that, not that, that apparently need not be confused. Huh? If I choose which color I want, that I don't see why that has to be confused. There's, not, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, now... There's no confusion there. Yeah, but the choice, the choice about the psyche, it seems That's to me, is where the confusion is. That's all we are talking is. about the yeah. psyche. Yeah, well, it tends to, you know, we the language tends to uh, carry you away, you see. Yes. And we are talking of the psyche that chooses. Yes. That chooses to become, really. Yes. Chooses to become, and also choice exists where there is confusion. Yes. Well, you're saying out of confusion, the psyche makes a choice to become one thing or another. Yes. Right? That being confused, it tries to become something better. Right? And choice implies a duality. Yes, but now it seems at first sight we have another duality you've introduced, which is the mind and the brain. I, that, I, no, that's not a duality. Yeah, well, that's important that's to get clear. That's <laughs> not a duality. Yes, what, what is the difference? <clears throat> All right, let's take a very simple example. Human beings are violent. And this has been, uh, nonviolence has been projected by thought. And that is the duality, the fact and the non-fact. Well, you're saying there's a duality between a fact and what, and some uh, mere projection which the mind makes. The ideal and the fact. Yes, and the ideal is unreal and the fact is real. That's it, the ideal is non, not, not actual. Yes, that's it, not actual. Now then, now why that, and you say the, disti the division of those two you call duality, but why do you give it that name here? Yeah. Because they're divided. Well, at least they appear to be divided. And divided, and we are struggling, as all separates, the totalitarian communist ideals and the democratic ideals. They are the outcome of thought and so on, which is limited, and this is creating havoc in the world. Yes, yeah, so there's a division which has been brought in. Uh, but I think we were discussing in terms of we dividing something which cannot be divided, right? We're trying to divide right. the psyche. Right? The, violence cannot be divided into non-violent. Yeah. And the psyche cannot be divided into violent and non-violent. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. So if it's violent, it cannot be divided that's into right. a violent and a non-violent right. part. Right? So, so that's very really good. <laughs> so can we... Right. Uh, remain with what is, not with what should be, what must be, and invent an ideals yeah, but, and all the rest of it. Yes, but could we return to the uh, question of the mind and the brain now, th that we're saying that is not a division. Oh, no, that's not a division. They are in contact, is that one? There's, we said there's contact between the mind and the brain when the brain is silent and has space. Yes, so we're saying that the mind actually, although they're in, in contact and, and, you know, and, and not divided at all, there can be an independent, uh, the, the mind can still have a certain independence of the conditioning of the brain. Now, careful, sir. Yeah. Careful, careful. Let's see. Suppose my brain is conditioned, being programmed as a Hindu. And I function, act, I, my whole life is conditioned by the idea that I'm a Hindu. Mind, obviously, has no relationship with that condition. Now, when you're using the word mind, it, that means it's not my mind or... Oh, mind, mind. You're it's discussing my... mind universally or generally. Yeah. It's not my brain either. No, but there's a particular brain, this brain or that brain, and now, but... Will you say there's a particular mind? No. No, mind. you see, that's an important difference. Yeah. 
They're saying mind is really universal. Mind is universal. It's, you can use that word. Yes, or unlimited or yes. un, un, undivided. <clears throat> it is unpolluted, not polluted by thought. But, see, I think for most people, at least there will, there will be a difficulty saying, what, how do we know anything about this mind? We, I only know my mind is the first feeling, right? You cannot call it your mind. It's your, you only have your brain, which is conditioned. You can't say it's my mind. Yes. Well, the, whatever is going on inside, I, I feel, is mine. It, it's very different from what's going on inside somebody else. No. I question whether it's... At least that seems different at yes, first sight. I question whether it is different. What's going on inside me as a human being and you as another human being we both go through all kinds of problems, suffering, fear, anxiety, loneliness, suffer, and so on, so on. Yeah. We have our dogmas, beliefs, superstitions, and everybody has them. Well, we'll say it's all very similar, but still it seems each one of us is isolated from the other. By thought. By you mean, thought is created that I am different from you. Yes. Because my body is different from you. My face is different from you. So we carry that same, we extend that same thing into the psychological area. Yes, we've discussed that. But now, no. uh, if we say, that, all right, that, that division is an illusion, perhaps, now then... Uh, no, not perhaps. No, let's say it is. It is an, uh, it's an illusion, all right, now, although it is not obvious if a person first looks at it. Of course. Now then, uh, and we say mind... Not only uh, in reality, even brain is not divided because we're saying that we're all not only basically similar but uh, really connected, right? And then we say, under, beyond all that is mind, which has no uh, division at all. It is unconditioned. Yes, it would, would almost seem to imply then that, insofar as a person feels he is a separate being, he has very little contact with mind, right? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> he says has no mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's very important to understand. Not the mind, but my conditioning. Mm -hmm. Then if, whether that my conditioning, human conditioning, can ever be dissolved. That's the real issue. Yes. Uh, I think that, uh, I mean, still the mind, uh, we won't call it the mind, but a human being uh, considers always what is the meaning? See, I think we want to understand the meaning of what is being said. You see that uh, we have a mind that is universal, that is in some kind of space, you say. Or is it as its own space? It's not, it is not in me or in my brain. But it's, it has a space. Has, it, has, it, it, is, it lives in space. It lives in a space. Right? And silence. And silence. But it's the space of the mind, right? It's not a space like this space. No, no. And that's why we said space is not invented by thought. Yes. Now, is it possible then to perceive this space when the mind is silent? Or to be in contact with it? Uh, not perceive. And when the brain is. Yeah, let's see. You're asking a question whether the mind can be perceived by the brain. Or at least somehow be aware, an awareness or... A, Yes, hmm. yes. And we are saying yes, through meditation. You may not like to use that word. Well, I don't mind. <laughs> I think it is possible to bring about, to, she said that's a different thing. When we use the word meditation, it's generally understood there is always a meditator meditating. That meditation is really an unconscious process. It's not a conscious process. Well, and how are you able to say that meditation takes place then if it's unconscious? It is taking place when there is, when the brain is quiet. Well, you mean by consciousness all the movement of thought? Yes, movement of thought. What with feeling, desire, yes, yes, will, and yes. all that goes with it, right? But there's a kind of awareness still, isn't there? Oh, yes. Yes, I see. I, it depends what you call awareness. Yes. Awareness of what? I don't know. Possibly awareness of something deeper. I don't know.
see, and we, when we use the word deeper, it's immeasurable. I know, so how would you? Well, let's not use that, but let's say that some kind of the brain is not, see, there's a kind of unconsciousness which you're simply not aware of at all. A, a person may be unconscious of some of his, uh, you know, would you, his problems, well, let's, right, let's his conflicts. Let's go at it. Let's go yeah. If I do something consciously, it's the activity of thought. Yes. Uh, right? Yes, it's thought reflecting on, it, on itself. It's the activity of thought. Now, if I consciously meditate, practice, do all this kind of uh, what I call nonsense, then you are making the brain conform to another pa- another series of patterns. Yes, it's more becoming. It's the a, more of becoming. That's right. Yes, you're trying to become better. There is no, you can't. There is no illumination by becoming. You can't be illumined, as if, mm. if I can use that word by saying, I'm going to be a chief. Yes, yeah, so now it seems very difficult to communicate what, suppose, something which is not conscious, you see there. That's, that's the difficulty. But, but it, it's, still, it's not just being uh, uh, knocked out, or you know, a person is unconscious if he's knocked out too, but you don't mean that. <laughs> no. Or under anesthetic. Or <laughs> no, let's put, put it, let's put it that way. Conscious meditation, conscious activity to control thought, to free oneself from conditioning, is not freedom. Yes, I think that's clear, but now it becomes very unclear how to communicate what, what, what else, you see that? Wait a minute, that can, how can I tell, you want to tell me what lies beyond thought? Or when thought is silent. Quite right? silent. What words would you use? Well, I suggested the word awareness. Uh, or, or what about the word attention? I don't. Attention is better for me. Yes. Would you say attention, inattention, there is no center, as the me. Well, and the kind of attention you're discussing, I mean, there is a kind, which is the usual kind, where we pay attention because of what interests of the course. name. Attention is not concentration. Yeah, that is concentration. But yeah. now, we're saying, we're discussing a kind of attention without this me present, which, That's right. which is not the activity of the conditioning. Not the activity of thought. Yeah. At, in attention, the thought has no place. Yes, but... Could we say more, what, what do we mean by attention? Now, would the derivation of the word be of any use? It means stretching the mind no, towards something. Would that help? No, no. Hmm. Would, it, would it help if we say concentration is not attention, right? effort is not attention, when I make effort to be, to attend, it's not mm-hmm. attention. Attention can only come into being when the self is not. Yes, but that is going to get us in a circle because we're saying we're starting when the self is. So mm-hmm. here's a person who say meditation is necessary. He begins with the self. He says, I'm no, there. No, I use the word carefully. Meditation means measure. Yeah. As long as there is measurement, which is yeah. becoming, yeah. there is no meditation. Yes. Let's so put it that way. Well, we can discuss when there is not meditation. Uh, That's it. Through negation, yes. the other is. But if we successfully, if we succeed in negating the whole activity of what is not meditation, you say the then other meditation will be there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, but that which is not meditation, but which we think is meditation. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's very clear. As long as there is measurement, which is the becoming, which is the process of thought, meditation or silence doesn't, cannot be. And you say, now in there, there's this undirected attention, uh, and 
this attention, is it of the mind or is, is it a Attention is of the mind. But it contacts the brain, doesn't it? Yes. We said that. As yeah. long as the brain is silent, yeah. the other has, con has contact. Yes, that is, the, this true attention has contact with the brain when the brain is silent. Right? Silent. And has, has space. What is the space? The brain has no space now because um, it's concerned with itself. Is programmed, it is self centered, and it is, uh, it is limited. Yes, now would you say the brain, in addition, the mind ha is in its space? Now, does the brain have a space does too? Limited. A limited space. Of course, but thought has a limited space. But still, this limit, but when thought is absent, does the brain have That's a space? Right. That's right. Does it? Brain has space, yes. Uh, unlimited? No. It's only mind has unlimited. unlimited. Ah. I can have my mind can be my brain can be quiet over a problem which I've thought about and I suddenly say well I won't think any more about it and there is a certain amount of space in that space you solve the problem yes now if the mind is silent uh, and is not thinking of a problem then there's still the space is limited though yes but it is open to uh, to the other to the, to to the, the attention mind. now would you say the mind in through attention or in the inattention, in, in, the mind is contacting the, the brain. Yes, when the brain is not inattentive. So what happens to the brain? Uh, what happens to the brain, which is to act, hmm? right? Which is to um, see. Wait, let's get it clear. We said. Intelligence is the is born out of compassion and love. That intelligence operates when the brain is quiet. Yes. Does it require uh, operate through attention? Uh, of course, of yes. course, of course. Yes. So attention seems to be the contact. Contact attention. Actually, the, uh, the attention. Contact. We said too. Attention can only be when the self is not. Yes. All right, now, you say that the love and compassion are sort of the ground far, and out of this comes intelligence, the intelligence through, through attention. Atten yeah, Up uh, functions through the brain. And this intelligence, so let's say there are two questions. One is the nature of this intelligence, and the second is what, what, is the, what, what does it do to the brain, you see? Yes, so let's see. That is... We must again approach it negatively. Love is not jealousy and all that. Love is not personal. But it can be personal. But well, then it's not what you're talking about. Yes. Love is not my country, your country, my God, I love my God. No. It's not that. Well, if it's from a universal mind. That's why I say love is something not. It has no relationship to thought. Yes, and to particular. It, it does not start in the particular brain, right? Originate yeah, in the particular yeah. brain. Right? It's not my love. Yes. When there's that love, out of that there's compassion and there's intelligence. Yeah. Now, this intelligence, mm -hmm. right? We, we have to, the nature of this intelligence, that is what this intelligence is able to, if I could use the word, understand deeply, you know, I don't see what... No, no, not understand. Well, what something... Wait, let's look at Let's it. see, what, what will it do? Is it, does it perceive? Through perception it acts. Yes. Now, what is that? But you see, a perception of what? Perception. Now, let's discuss perception. Mm -hmm. There can be perception only when it's not tinged by thought. And it's not tinged or when there is no interference from the movement of thought, there is perception. Which is direct insight into a problem. Yes. Not or the, into a into some into human uh, Complex. Yeah. Now, the, 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 this perception originates in the mind. 
Ah, does the perception originate in the mind? Let's look at it. Yes, when the brain is quiet. Yes. Now, but what is we use the words perception and intelligence. Now, what is what is how are they related, or what is their difference? Between perception and intelligence. Yes. No. no. So we'll say intelligence is perception. Perception. That's right. Intelligence is perception of what is, right? And through attention, so, there's let, contact. Let, let's take a problem and make it probably yeah. easier to understand. Take a problem of suffering. Mm-hmm. Human beings have suffered endlessly through wars, through every kind of disease, physical disease, and through a wrong relationship with each other. Man has suffered greatly. Now, can that end? Yes. Well, I say that that is, the difficulty of ending that is that it's on the program. You're condi- we're conditioned to this whole yes, thing, right? Whole thing. And that's physically and chemically registered. We are conditioned. Yes. Now, that has been going on for centuries. Yes, so it's very deep in some way. Very, very very deep. Now, can that suffering end? Yes, and it cannot end by an action of the brain, because the brain is caught in this suffering and it cannot cannot take an action toward it, its own suffering. Of course it cannot. Thought, that's why thought cannot end it. Yes, because thought has... Thought has created it. Has created it in any way it... It is unable to get hold of it. <laughs> yes. Thought has created the wars, the misery, the confusion, <coughs> and thought has become prominent in human relationship. Well, you see, I think that people might agree with that and still think that thought might still, uh, as thought can do bad things, it could do good things. You see, no, I think thought that, cannot do or good or bad. It's uh, thought. It, it, it cannot get hold of this... Uh, the thought cannot get hold of this suffering. That is, this suffering being in the physical uh, conditioning of the brain and the chemical, thought has no way of knowing what it is, even, you see. It's, I mean, I lose my son and I... Yeah, but I mean, by thinking, I don't know what's going on inside me. What this, I can't change the suffering inside That's because right. I don't... Thinking will not uh, show me what it is. Now so, you're saying maybe there's an all, intelligence. But after all, <coughs> we're asking, can suffering end? That's a problem. Yes, and it's clear that thinking cannot do it. Huh? Thought cannot do no. it. No. All right, now, because... That's the point. We've got if I have that. an insight into it... Hmm? Yes, now this insight will be the action of uh, the mind, you know, through yes, intelligence, right. intelligence and attention. When there is that insight, intelligence wipes away suffering. Yes, now, you're saying that therefore there is a contact from mind to matter which removes the whole physical chemical structure that's which right. keeps us that's going right. on with suffering. That's that in that ending, there's a mutation in the brain cell. Yes, we well, discussed this some years ago, this yeah. question. Yes, but that, that, that mutation just wipes out the whole structure that makes oh, you yeah. suffer. Right? Therefore, it's like I've been going along a certain tradition. I suddenly change that tradition. There is a change in the whole mm-hmm. brain, which has been going north, and now it changes, goes east. Then you think. Yes, well, of course, this is a, a radical uh, notion from the point of view of uh, uh, traditional ideas in science because uh, 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 if we accept that mind is different from matter, then it's hard, uh, people would find it hard to say that mind would actually... Mind of Freud, sir. Would you put it mind is pure energy? Well, we could put it that way. That, uh, 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 but say matter is energy too. Yes, but therefore, matter is limited. Thought is limited. Yes, well, but we're saying that the pure energy of mind is able to reach into the limited energy Limit, of matter. Yeah, that's right. And change the limitation. Yes, to, to remove if, some of the limitation. That's right. When there is mm, a deep issue con- or problem hmm. which is, or a challenge which you are facing. Yes, so we have a thought, yes, so, and, and we, we would also add that all the traditional ways of trying to do this cannot work because it they're... It hasn't worked. Well, not, that's not enough. We have to say because people still might hope it could. You see, it cannot actually. It cannot. Because thought cannot 
get at the basis of its own its own physical That's chemical right. basis in the cells and do anything about those cells. Yes, sir. We've said that very clearly. Uh, Thought cannot bring about a change in itself. Yes, and yet practically everything that mankind has been trying to do is based on thought. Right? Thought. And there is a limited area, of course, where that's all right, but it, it, we cannot, therefore, as we said, you know, we're, we're discussing before, uh, do anything about the future of mankind from the usual approach. Huh? So look, that's what I'm, I'm, when you listen to the politicians who are so very active in the world, they are creating problem after problem, and to them, thought is the most important thing, ideal. Well, that nobody, generally speaking, nobody know, they can even exactly. uh, know of anything else, you see that. Exactly. He, I, we are saying the only instrument which is thought is worn out, except in certain areas. Well, it never was adequate except in those areas, I mean. Yeah, of course, of course. But, uh, um, and man has always been in trouble, <laughs> as far as we can remember, as far as history goes, right? Yes, sir, man has always been in trouble, turmoil, fear. Uh, we mustn't reduce all this to an intellectual argument. Mm -hmm. But as human beings, facing all the confusion of the world, can there be a solution to all this? Yes, well, that, and that comes back to the question I, I'd like to repeat, that it seems that here uh, there are a few people, you know, who are talking about it. And think, you know, perhaps meditating, and so on. But how is that going to affect this vast uh, current of mankind? Probably very little. But see, I but think. Would, why do you really, will it affect? It might or it might. It not. might not. It might or it might not. Might not. Yes. But w then the one puts that question. Then what's the use of it? Yes, that's the point. That I think there's an instinctive feeling uh, that makes one put the question. Yes. I think that's the wrong question. It's, but it's the wrong question. You see, that is the first instinct is to say, what can we do to yes. stop this tremendous catastrophe? Yes. <laughs> but uh, if each one of us, whoever listens, sees the truth of this, the thought in its activity, both externally and inwardly, has created a terrible mess, great suffering, then one must inevitably ask, is there an ending? Is there an ending to all this? If thought cannot end it, what will? Yes. What is the new instrument that will put an end to all this misery? See, there is a new instrument, which is the mind and so on and so on. Yes. Which is intelligence. But, you see, the difficulty is also, people won't listen to all this. They have come to definite conclusions both the scientists and the ordinary layman like me, uh, they won't listen. Yes, well, that is the sort of point I had in mind when I said that a few people don't seem to have of much course, effect. Of I, mean, I think, after all, few people have changed the world. Hitler was a... <coughs> well... Whether good or bad, that's not the point. But he didn't change it fundamentally. No, he changed the world superficially. Yeah. It. The revolution of the Bolsheviks, the communists, has changed, but they come to the same pattern again. Physical revolution has never changed psychologically human state. Well, it would, do you think it's possible that some, that, that say, a certain number of brains uh, coming in contact with mind in this way will be able to have an effect on mankind which is beyond just the immediate obvious yes, effect of their right. communication. I, that's right. I mean, obviously, we're, uh, whoever, uh, this, uh, whoever does this may communicate in the ordinary way and that have a small effect. Uh, but uh, now this is a possibility of something entirely different, right? See, how do you... I've often thought about how do you convey to all this rather subtle and com very complex issue, how do you convey all this to a person who is steeped in tradition, who is conditioned, and won't even take time to listen, to consider? Yes, well, that is a question. You see, one point you could say is that 
this conditioning cannot be absolute, you know, an absolute block or else there would be no way out at all. But uh, the conditioning may be thought to have uh, some sort of uh, yes. per permeability. Right? Talk, the Pope won't listen to him. But, but the Pope has tremendous influence. But is, there, is it possible that every person has something he can listen to if it could be found? If he takes little patience, yeah. who, will, who will listen? The, the politicians won't listen. The yeah. idealists won't listen. The totalitarians won't listen. The deeply steeped religious people won't listen. So perhaps uh, that's the whole point. So-called ignorant person, not highly educated and condition and his professional career money. The poor man who says I'm suffering, please let's end that. Well, but he doesn't listen either, you see. <laughs> he wants to get a job, you yeah, know. Right? <laughs> he said, feed me first. Uh, yeah, I, I, we have been through all this uh -huh. for the last 60 years. The poor man won't listen, the rich man won't listen, the learned won't listen, and they deeply dogmatic religious believers don't listen. So that perhaps it's like a, a wave in the world. It might catch somebody. I, I think it's a wrong question to say, does it affect? Yes, all right. We say that that brings in time and that's yeah. becoming, you know, yeah. a cycle. It brings in the psyche in the process that's of becoming right. again. Again. And but if you say... It must affect mankind. Well, but are you proposing that it affects mankind through uh, the mind directly rather than... Yes, yes. That they're, we're taking it's very not, seriously this... It may not show immediately in action. Yes, you're taking very seriously what you said, that the mind is universal and, and uh, is not located in our ordinary space. Yes. It yes. is not separate. It is not... You see, uh, there is a danger in saying this. Mind is universal. That's what some people say, the mind. Mm -hmm. And it's become a tradition. Well, you can turn it into an idea, of course. Yeah, of course. That's just the danger of it. That's what I'm saying. Yes. But what you're saying is that, what, well, really the question is, we have to come directly in contact with this to of make course. it real, right? That's it. The, the only come into contact with it when the self is not, hmm. to put it very, very simply. And therefore, when the self is not, there is beauty, there is silence, space, then the, that intelligence which is born of compassion operates through the brain. It's very simple. Yes. But would it be worth discussing you know, the self, uh, the question of how, uh, see, since the self is <laughs> active, I know. Uh, widely, um, but that's our long tradition of many, many, many centuries. Now, is there some aspect of meditation which, is, uh, which can be helpful here when the self is acting? You see, suppose a, a person says, okay, I, I'm caught in the self, but I, I would like to, I want to get out, but I, I want to know, you know, what, what shall I do? Uh, you see that I, don't, I don't, I won't use the words, what shall I do, but I mean, what, 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 what do you say? Right? I, that's very simple. Is the observer different from the observed? Well, yes. suppose we say, yes, it, it appears to be different, then what? No, that, is that an idea or an actuality? Oh, wait, what, what do you mean? Actuality is when there is no division between the thinker and the thought. Yes, but suppose I, I say ordinarily one feels the observer is different from the observed. I say, we begin there. I will begin there and show you, look at it. Are you different from your anger, from your envy? from your suffering, you're not. Yes, at first sight it appears that I am. You see, that I might try to control it, right? And not or that you're, I justify you're that. it. Yes, uh, how will I see that I'm that? You are your name. You are your form, body. Hmm. You are all the reaction and actions. You are the belief, you are the fear, you are the suffering yes. and pleasure. And all. Yeah, you are all that. Yes, but... It, the first experience is that I am here first, and that those are belong. Those are properties of me. They're, qu oh. qu they're my qualities, which I can. 
either have or not have. I might be angry or not angry. I might have this belief or that belief. Contradictory, you're all that. But you see, it's not of, when you say I am that, do you mean that I am that and cannot be otherwise? No. At present, I, you are that. It can be totally otherwise. Yes, okay. So I, I am all that. Rather than saying, as I usually do, that uh, uh, I'm looking at those qualities. That's it. Or at least that I, the observer, I admit that I am anger, but I feel that I, as the observer, am not anger, but I'm uh, an unbiased observer who is looking at anger. Of course. Now but you're yeah, telling me that this unbiased observer is the same as the anger he is looking at. Of course. Hmm? Of course. Like the anal I analyze myself, and the analyzer is the analyzed. Yes, he's biased by what he analyzes. Of course. So uh, if, you wa if I watch anger for a while, I can see that I am very biased by the anger. Yes. And so at some stage I say, okay, I am the same. I am one with that anger, right? Not, not I am one with it. You are. I am. But that anger and I are the same, right? Yes. Not one. Observer is the observer. And when there is that actuality exists, you have really eliminated altogether conflict. Conflict exists when I am separate from my quality. Yes, that's because if I, feel, if I believe myself to be separate, then I can try to change it. But change since I am that, it's that trying to change itself and remain itself at yeah, the same that's time. Right. That's right. But when I am, the quality is me, the division has ended. Right? Yes, but when I see that the quality is me, then there's no point to... Uh, no, the whole thing. No, right? no. Right. What happens before the quality is not me? Yeah. Then in that there is conflict, <coughs> either suppression, escape, and all the rest of it, which is a wastage of energy. When the when that quality is me, I am. There is all that energy which has gone, which has been wasted, mm -hmm. is there to look, to observe. Yeah, but why does it make such a difference to have that quality being me? I'm sure it is. Yes, well, I mean, it makes a difference when there is no division between the quality and me. Yes, but when, when there is no perception of a difference, that's right. Then Put it down the, the mind does not try to fight itself. Yes. Hmm? Yes. If it, if, it has the, so. if there's an illusion of a difference, the mind must be compelled to fight against itself. Yes. The brain, yeah, the brain fights against itself, itself, right? That's right. And on the other hand, when there's no illusion of a difference, the brain just stops fighting, right? Fighting, and if we have the tremendous energy. Yes, it's the brain's natural energy is yes. released. Huh? Yes, and when there is, which means energy means attention. Yes, well, you say the energy of the brain allows for attention. But that from thing to dis dissolve. Yes, oh, wait a minute, because we said before attention was a contact of the yes, mind sir. and the brain. Now, but yes. the brain must be in a state of high energy That's right. to allow that contact. Right. Right? That's the same thing. Here. Yes, I mean, a, a brain which is low energy cannot allow that of contact. <laughs> but most of us have low energy hmm. because we, have so, we are so conditioned. Well, essentially, you're saying that this is the way to start, then. Yes, sir. Uh, start simply. Yes. Start with what is, what mm -hmm. I am. That's why self-knowledge is so important. Mm -hmm. Self-knowledge is not an accumulated process of knowledge, which then looks at. It is it's a constant learning about oneself. Yes, well, if you call it self-knowledge, then it's not knowledge of the kind you're talking, we talked about before, which is conditioning. That's right. But knowledge say, condition. But, but you're saying that self-knowledge of this kind is not conditioning. But, right. but why do you call it knowledge? It's, is it a different uh, kind yes. of knowledge? Yes. Knowledge conditions. Yeah, but you're, now you have this self-knowledge. Self-knowledge, which is to know and to, appreh to comprehend oneself, to understand oneself is such a subtle complex things living. But you're essentially knowing yourself in the very moment 
in which things are yeah, happening. To know what is happening. Rather than store it up in memory. Of course. And that can only be in my re re through reactions, I begin to discover what I am, what mm -hmm. my, and so on, so on. I think you better. Right? I don't know. 